So please help us welcome our next actor, Julian Richard. Make some noise, folks. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm going to introduce somebody. <laughs> don't look. Don't pay attention to the man behind the, sh the curtain. Yet. So welcome, welcome to Vision Con. I hope you guys are having fun. Woo! I hope you have a lot of questions in mind. Um, let me see. Let me get started. I wrote something. I have notes because I write things easily. So according to his website. JulianRichings.net, in case you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, because there's a lot of cool clips that I hadn't seen yet. So definitely go there. But, um, let me see, our very special guest was born in England, Oxford to be specific. He trained and worked in the UK, and then toured internationally with an acclaimed theater troupe across Europe and North America. He eventually landed in Toronto in the early 80s, fell in love, never left. I love that part. In addition to his live theater performances, he has appeared in over 100 feature films and had recurring roles in multiple TV shows. I bet a few of you have specific ones in mind. Um, but no further ado, please join me in welcoming to the stage actor Canadian, Mr. Julian Richards. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Hi! Good to see you all. How are you all doing? Good, good, good. Very nice to be here. Thank you. For, oh, thank you for, for joining us. Very nice introduction. All right, well, I'm going to I'll sit down. I'm very twitchy as a person, so I tend to sort of move around a lot. But let's start by sitting. We'll start. Let's see, let's see how we go. And then the stage is yours. Okay. Oh, I'm just poking around the corner. Hi. And if you need to, you have enough cord and you can walk around if you need to. Oh, there we yes, go. There you go. Watch out. Just, just stay on the stage. If you feel too connected, I you can have this one too. Just right. No, I'm the room is yours. <laughs> well, thank, no, thank you so much. I, now I've got to ask. I pulled the actor Canadian straight from your website. So, I don't know if you, you make the website or somebody just gives you the website. Um, I'm, the, I'm technologically useless. I'm old, Dean, very old. And, and so, I rely on um, the kindness of friends, my wife, who's very technologically good, and, you know, but then friends get fed up with doing it after. Julian, you press that button there, and that sends this to there, and I, they get fed up with me. Anyway, so my, my uh, online presence is a little unpredictable, but I try, and I periodically I keep up. I, I'm, I managed to keep going with Instagram because it's easy to press a photograph, do a photograph and then share it, and, and I enjoy doing that because I'm privileged to, as an actor, I travel around quite a bit, and I always love coming to places like Springfield and kind of meeting people and seeing the local sites, not just the tourist attractions, but the local sites. And um, I, so I like sharing that with people. So, uh, so that's my biggest online presence is Instagram. It works because I stalked you a little bit on Instagram before this, and I, I know I loved the pictures of the different places you different were at places. and things you were doing. That's fun to watch. When and I and it, take, it takes less technical competence to do it too. Yes, Instagram's all pictures, less words. I like that. <laughs> but well, the actor in Canadian were like in bold. So I was wondering, are those words that you would choose to oh. describe yourself, or are there other ones? No, not on purpose, but it, I guess it suits me quite well, because as you can hear from the way I talk, I'm British originally. Um, I say originally, you can't ever not be where you were born, that always comes back up. But I've been living in Canada now for 40 years plus, um, so really, uh, you know, I've been longer in Canada than I have in Britain, so, you know, I, I, I'm very much a Canadian in that Canadians have this sort of 
they have a funny sort of um, complex. Like, they're not like their big brother to the south, the US, and they're not like their old stuffy old uncle over the Atlantic, the British uh, in the UK, but they're a bit of both and they're a bit of everything. And so, in many ways, I, as an actor, I identify with that. Um, I'm a middle sibling, and I identify with being a middle sibling when you're not quite you, you're the youngest, you're not the eldest, you're not quite sure who you are, but you change according to who you're working with or talking to. So I'm aware of that as an actor, and, and Canada, for me, represents that as a, as a culture, too, that's got a, a bit of everything and, and is emerging and figuring itself out. And, and that's a very exciting place for me to be as an actor. That makes sense. That makes me think Canada is the middle child actor of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did the acting bug bite you? Oh, I think I've always been an actor. I, I, I started as a kid um, in, in England. You never had drama as a program in school. You know, that was considered to be a bit like, you don't do drama, you do reading, writing, and arithmetic. You don't do those airy-fairy subjects. But I used to love being in the nativity play, and uh, you know, the school play, and stuff like that. And I benefited, talking of being a middle child, my older brother had this um, strange talent. He used to build stuff. And not like trains or locomotives, but he used to build structures like fairground um, booths, um, haunted houses, circuses, and, and, and paint them, and, and like designs. And he used to get me to be the guy in the middle, like the ringmaster in the circus, or the, the spook in the haunted house. So I, right from the get-go, had this brother with a talent that was building stuff, I used to fill in and act it out for him. And then my parents kind of realized that they should channel his uh, sort of weird talent, and they sent him to a youth club that put on plays. Well, he was the only guy that wanted to be a designer, everybody else wanted to be an actor and wanted to be famous, but he wanted to just build the scenery. So he went there and he was very successful, he became a, a stage designer. And I went to the same youth club because I really thought it was cool putting on plays and doing this stuff. But I wanted to be an actor. And I have a younger brother who did the same thing and he became a lighting designer. So it's just one of those um, things where I'm fortunate because my older sibling had a talent and I sort of followed along. And also my parents were um, open-minded enough, I guess, to recognize that and to try and channel our Creativity. That's a long-winded answer. I'm yeah. very good at long-winded answers. You can still hear me okay, can you? It's funny, when, when you speak, I'm used to, like I'm a theater actor, so I'm not used to speaking in microphones, so when I hear the echo, I go, can they hear me? <laughs> no, anyway, you obviously can. They seem enthralled. I am. I, I love your long-winded answers. And the, the accent doesn't hurt. I enjoy uh, listening to you talk. The accent? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people, I've met a lot of you guys uh, over the last couple of days, and a lot of you are surprised by my accent, which surprised me, because I thought my accent in Supernatural was kind of, it had a bit of British in there. It's sort of like what I like to call mid-Atlantic. Like if you had, if you dropped me straight in the middle of the Atlantic, somewhere between North America and Britain, it's sort of a bit of both, but, um, Obviously, when I'm talking to you guys, my, my Englishness comes out. And it's, it's probably a good idea that I haven't been talking to my brothers because I'd be talking like this all the time, you know. <laughs> well, since you brought up that, that show that I love so much. Yes. I, was, I, I had read on IMDb, and I've heard it's not always 100% correct. But I read that you've played death three different times? At least. At least? <laughs> and because of my good looks, I think. I, I think it's like, oh, you'll be, um, like, you'll be a grim reaper, or a funeral director, or a creepy guy. And uh, I think over the years I've played, uh, yeah, I've played the grim reaper, I think three times, at least three times. 
Um, certainly recognizably so, yeah. Um, but it's kind of fun. And I have to say that I approach that like I do most of the work that I do in that, well, if you're going to play somebody that's supposed to be um, serious and maybe a little bit intimidating or frightening, it, it's much more interesting if you play the other notes, if you counterpoint. And, and so, for instance, if you're playing a character like Death, who is extremely powerful, as we've seen from his intro, it's better to act in the scene playing it very light and say, would you like some pizza? You know, and um, rather than, you know, I'm tough, you better listen to what I'm saying. So it's really good to play the opposite. Um, and, and that's what I've done with that character. And um, I think it, it, in some ways it makes him even more powerful because he's not having to struggle so much to exert his authority. I agree. I, I felt like there was authority and you just didn't care because you knew you had it. Yeah. I and I, I have to say, too, um, shout out to uh, Jensen, Jensen Ackles, who was my scene partner in that first scene uh, in the pizza parlor. And um, he acted scared. And I know it sounds like a silly detail, but I couldn't come across as being powerful and intimidating if the guy in the same scene of me, it was me wasn't doing the reciprocal thing of being intimidated. So <laughs> it, we worked together on that and, and it really helped because I've done a lot of different shows over the years and I've, you know, I've been a guest star on a bunch of different shows and sometimes I'll go in and I'll have a scene with like the leading actor and the leading actor is sort of like no, I'm the lead, and this is my scene, and it's about me. You know what I mean? And, and so there's not that give and take. And, and so Jensen, to his credit, and Jared, um, uh, are both actors that actually allow the people working with them to be at their best, which I think is one of the reasons for the show going on for so long. It was fun. Yeah. And it means that every time you see a new character, you go, oh, they're interesting, or, you know, there's at least something about them that is uh, a sort of a color that adds to the show, and, and it's been helped by the two main characters. I've noticed that a lot in, in all shows. If you have a good group, it, it's going to do well. Yeah. You need a little bit of every part of the show, the writing, everything, but yeah, and, you don't and, have a good team. Uh, I, I completely, and, and if you're going to be in a, in a show that runs for so long, um, it would be easy to get bored with the same formula each episode, right? If it goes on and on and on. So you really rely on guest stars to come in and bring a primary color and for, to knock the, the regular narrative off kilter and then get back. And then something completely different the next week. So it's up to you to bring that to them and they can help that by helping you look good. So it's sort of a, it's a complete circle. Since you mentioned the pizza, I gotta throw this out. Uh, Death was very intrigued or obsessed with food, wherever he went. Have you heard what you need to have in Springfield? <laughs> Cashew chicken! Yes. I know, and, and, and Leon's is the place, isn't it? The, the, the original. place. Yeah, but a lot of my friends chatting to, oh, there's some fist pumps at the back there. Yeah, 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 so uh, Leon's chicken um, is definitely on the list. I, I don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna attempt to, to get the authentic uh, thing. Um, yeah, um, but it's kind of fun just hanging out and going to places. Like, as an actor touring around, a lot of people go, Ooh, you might want to go to our newest fusion, blah, 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 you know, place. And I go, well, no, where does everybody else go? Like, where's the burger joints and the greasy spoons and stuff? So um, I, I tend to, to, to enjoy that about visiting different places. So Le Leon's is on my list. I went to the Shaken Burger last night. No, Shaken Steak. Shaken Steak. There you go. To me, like we were talking earlier about being um, like from Britain and from Canada, to me it was like classic America. 
you know, with the grill and, and the uniforms. And I got a hat! I got one of those paper hats, too. Oh, yeah, 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 that, that was great. Although, we were upset we didn't get the colouring combo. I think that if you're a kid, you can get uh, something where you can colour it as well. Yeah. I don't usually let you. Oh, I've asked. I should have insisted, do you know who I am? <laughs> I, I insist on the crayon. <laughs> or else. <laughs> okay, well tell us really quickly, where do we have to go, what do we have to eat in Toronto, if we make it there? Well, Toronto, it's, Toronto's a funny place. Um, it's got, it's such diversity in Toronto. It's got all kinds of cuisine and culinary places. Amazing sort of, like I say, fusion of Korean and um, East Indian and like these amazing restaurants. But I'm cheap. <laughs> and I, I haven't been to a lot of them, so I point my friends in the direction of these cool places that I've heard of. Um, but I, I haven't tried a lot of them. I, there's a diner from the 1930s that's just up the street from me called the, the Lakeview Diner. And I go there a lot. It's got, got a, a really nice kind of friendly vibe. I, I, I like that. I like kind of places where you can, where, where they don't have tablecloths and it's not all fancy service. You can just sit there for a long time if you want. You know, that's my kind of place. But um, t Toronto is a great place, it's a great place for me and it's been a, a, a really good um, centre for film, television and theatre, which has been important to me too. Because uh, really, I, like I grew up in the theatre and that's my first and foremost love. Yeah, I, I read that you're very involved still with Toronto theatre? Yeah, uh, well I... It's a bit hard to keep doing theatre shows because scheduling wise, if you're going to do a show, you generally have to commit to um, a, an engagement six months, nine months ahead of time. Well, the film industry doesn't work that way. The film industry basically, you know, you get a phone call saying, can you be in Springfield tomorrow? You know, or, or, or whatever. Uh, and so you basically have to go, oh, well I could, but I'm supposed to be doing this theatre show. Huh. And then you're faced with a really difficult dilemma of letting people down or, you, you know, so I tend not to take long-term uh, theatre commitments. I just do sort of workshops and I go a lot and support the local theatre, but um, mainly film and television. I don't know what year it was from, but I saw the clip of you um, reading Twas the Night Before Christmas in front of... Oh, yeah. Was it Canadian Children's Opera? That's right. And I, I do it again this year. We're doing a final pr performance this year with a, a group called Art of Time Ensemble. And it's a group that um, puts on shows and sort of mixes mediums, like music and design and performance. And um, yeah, I, I'll do that again. I, I like reading stuff like from oh, Dickens and nursery lovely. rhymes and stuff. I, that's what the thing that I did. And in fact, uh, a few people have said to me that they enjoyed my readings of Beatrix Potter over uh, COVID, which I, I like doing too. That's, uh, something for me to look at. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, musicals. You've done a couple of those. Uh, yeah, but I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I just fake. I, I played rock stars. I like that because I like I, I, um, I I've got the old um, Char Ch Charlie Watts sort of Mick Jagger old English rocker sort of. Well, they're they're my heroes too. Growing up in England in the sixties, it was the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, and um, I, I've I've played various rock guys because I've I've sort of got that look, or I did, I guess I'm getting, I'm looking like an older rock star these days. Um, and I, there was one particular movie called Hardcore Logo, which was a, an independent movie about the reuniting of a punk band. And I play this sort of, um, it, it, his name in the movie is Bucky Hate, and he's sort of like an Iggy Pop kind of godfather of punk kind of guy. That was very cool, and I, I enjoyed that. And I channeled all my love of punk and rock and roll and stuff into that character um, and, and that was a sort of a sidestep to a lot of the, the more traditional horror and spooky stuff that I do. It was, it was fun to go in that direction. Is that something 
you enjoy more, or was it just nice for something different? It's, I, can, I can't say. I, I, I enjoyed it as much, and I always enjoyed the challenge of doing something a little bit different, like a comedy is fun to do, and I don't do as many comedies, but I don't sort of go, oh, thank God, at last I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. I just enjoy embracing my next job, honestly. And, you know, people will say, well, what would you really like to do? Well, I don't know. I, I like to be surprised, and sometimes, in the new production that I'm in, I find something that I've never done before, and that to me is exciting. Okay. Um, voice acting. You've done, have you done some voice acting? Yep. Okay. Uh, no, okay. I, video game, I saw one. Video game. I, um, Ubisoft, I've done a couple of game um, things. Um, uh, motion capture, which is a whole different art form, and, and very... Um, very interesting and very weird. Like, I'm used to being on a film set where, you know, to set up a shot, you, it takes the lighting department maybe an hour to light it properly, make sure that everything's right, and then you rehearse it, and then you tweak it, and then it all looks very polished at the end, but it takes a long time to create that. Well, with, with um, motion capture, it's amazing. You have a table, you know, and you, okay, Julian, you're on the stagecoach now, sit on that table and the artists afterwards will generate a stagecoach all around you. You know, and it's like, oh wow. So you do that piece of, of, of the, the script and then they go, okay, we're on to the next piece. And I go, well, isn't there a break or something? Oh no, no, we don't need to. You just go on the stool over there for the next bit. And I'm used to the pace of a, a film set where you have a bit of time in between scenes to go learn your lines. You know, look at your lines and then come back. Well, you know, on, on um, the motion capture shoot, you have to have all your lines all set because it's like bang, 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 bang. And they work very, very quickly. Um, so it, that was a new experience for me. And um, what did I play? I can't remember now. I played Charles Darwin in, um, um, oh, it's, it's a very popular game and I'm terrible. I forgot the name of it. Oh, dear. I'm getting old, that's all there is to it. Um, but, and I do voice, uh, I, but I, I don't do a lot of animated uh, voices, I do more narration um, for documentaries and stuff, but, and I enjoy doing that. But um, a lot of my colleagues here that are here with us at, at the Calm are more anime um, voices and energies, and I think the, I haven't quite figured that out. I think you need a different kind of energy for that, and different voice tones as well. My, mine are more sort of old world, old school. You have the energy, though. I have the energy. You have the energy. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, there's my friends at the back. Hello. Have they come to arrest me? I hope not. Um, <laughs> we we ate together yesterday. We we yes, we we're old pals. <laughs> They're old pals of vision cards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does, do you feel like you have to? Is, does it take more acting ability when it's motion capture and there's not? Things oh, I see. And you're, you're not of? completely in. You have to imagine everything. Not really. I think it's always about intention, and um, it's it's about capturing the intention of the character at that moment. So that's where all your energy has to go into. So whether you're wearing a fancy headpiece or not, or, or you, you're wearing nothing, um, it depends on how clearly you've understood it in your brain. For me, anyway. I think different actors have different processes, and you know, some actors really like being dressed in the clothes of their character and the feel of their environment, and they really respond to that. Um, I'm kind of more... Um, as long as I understand what I'm doing, I can pretend. And, you know, if you, t if you said, that was great, Julian, but could you, in the middle of that speech, stop over there, and then, at the end of the speech, go over there? I could do that for you. Um, some actors would go, but my character won't do that. You know, it would stop. Whereas I'm the kind of actor that would go, sure, okay, well, I'll make it work, but I've just got to figure it out in my brain why I would do it. But, but I'll do it. I take direction. I like direction. Okay. Yes. That's why I've been married for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. Wise words. Yeah.
Um, something else I saw that you do, and you can see in the pictures on his table, is the heavy makeup characters. Yeah. Well, I, again, I think it comes down to looks. Uh, I have very prominent bone structure, and um, a lot of special effects departments have been able to build on that, right? And so it's a good basis for vampires and creepy guys and Three Finger, which was Wrong Turn. Do any of you folks familiar with uh, Wrong Turn? Wrong Turn, yeah. That was a, a big deal when I did it, and that was a four hour in the chair makeup. And that was in the old days when um, the, the process was kind of slower. It was different latex, different materials, and they had to, it took them a long time to put it on. But the worst part was taking it off because they had to reuse the pieces that they put on my face the following day. So they had to take them off very, very carefully. And that took two hours. So four hours to put on, two hours to take off, and a 10 hour filming day made for very long days with contact lenses and, uh, you know, and um, fingernails and um, all, all sorts of stuff. I, I mean, it's, it's acting. It's not like I like doing it, but it's a challenge doing certain things like that. Um, just stamina wise, it's, it's a challenge, but, but fun. Especially in retrospect, oh, in retrospect. Okay. at the time you go, oh god, I'm here I'm at four in the morning getting sprayed on latex and stuff, but no, I've, I've enjoyed my, my work with, with effects. Have you ever fallen asleep while they're doing it? Can you? Oh, no, oh, maybe at the end, maybe, they, or the big reward at the end of the day, and, and you, you guys doing cosplay too, I'm sure you know this, is when you're wearing headpieces or uh, hats or wigs, or you've got color over, over there, like color on your face. It's okay for the first hour or two, but there comes a point where you start to go, my skin, like what's up with, with this? So at the end of the day, a hot towel, that is the best. And I have fallen asleep at the end of an 18 hour day with a hot towel on my face. So. <laughs> it sounds relaxing, actually. <laughs> that part, not the, not the makeup, no, not the, the hot makeup. towel. No. Um, does anyone have questions? Should I come down and scour the audience? Yeah, let's let's do that. Some shy guys out there. Saw your hand first. So come this way. <laughs> I have to talk in the microphone. <laughs> do you want to stand up? Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. My question is, I've pretty much seen you in everything but Supernatural. You were literally my introduction to Supernatural with the gluttony episode, Nightmare Galore. Um, but my question for you is, with the Winchester Brothers and the cast, what were your favorite moments with them? And are they actually as kind as they seem when I met them at conventions and other places? They are very kind, very cool guys. Um, the thing that I get asked by a lot of people is, did, did, it's okay, you can, did they prank you, right? Look, because yes. they, they're known for their tricks, and uh, no, they didn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I say, but no, they didn't. And, and I was surprised, like, everybody has a story about, like, oh, they did this to me, and they did that to me. And I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, Oh my God, do they feel sorry for this poor old guy? We better not upset him, you know, because like, he's struggling, isn't it? Uh, no, but you know what it is, honestly? I think those guys, they are very much the heart and soul of the show. They're in most scenes, most of the time. And they have to maintain everybody's energy, and they have to keep themselves energetic and it can't just go through the motions, otherwise it, it will just not be very interesting. So I think they do stuff like that to just keep the crew on their toes, just to keep everybody's energy up. But they're serious professionals. Like I said, they're good actors. They help the other actor. So if there's a scene that requires a lot of um, work, a lot of concentration, like food scenes, like joking apart as pizza scenes, 
is actually very tricky because you have to remember exactly when you picked it up, when you put it in your mouth, how much you were chewing it, when you're saying a line, when you were on take 13, you know, from a different angle, from a wide shot. It has to be the same, right? So it's, you've got to sort of concentrate. So I think most of the scenes I was in were pretty technical and tricky, so they didn't mess around. They don't just mess around for the hell of it. They, I think they do it to maintain people's energy. So, so that's it, that's my answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, it sounds like that was a perfect chance for you to punk them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, hi again. Um, I know you did, I love you in Supernatural, but I was watching a Western show one night and I'm looking and I'm going in the covered wagon there's a face I recognize. And I'm going, no, that can't be it. And I watched that movie three times. I go, no, I can't be Julian. And it was in Open Range. Oh, Open Range, Kevin Costner. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, she does westerns too. And I just <laughs> loved it, you know, because it was a different side of you. Yeah. You played a bad guy. It was still a good side of you. And it's like, oh, would you do more <laughs> westerns if you had a chance? Oh, I absolutely would. Well. I mean, growing up as a kid, uh, westerns were the thing for me. Oh, yeah. I, I love what I, I love westerns, uh, which is I think why I, I love the USA. And, and I've always been drawn to come this side of the Atlantic. And horror movies, Hammer Horror, the British Hammer Horror movies, was my big influence, and westerns, um, and the old classics, John Ford movies, and. Um, and some of the more recent ones, um, th things like, I, I really like McCabe and Mrs. Miller uh, by Robert Altman. Um, there, there's, there's a bunch of sort of new, newer 70s and 80s movies, Unforgiven, things like that. And in fact, Unforgiven, it's the same producers and creative people behind it as Open Range. Um, and it's the same location in Alberta. But yeah, that to me is my, that's my childhood um, cosplay is me walking down the high street with a, you know, gun and, 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 and for a jewel. I mean, that's that's it for me. That's great. Yeah, I love the scene at the very end where you're running in the field and people are chasing. When I'm chased, yeah. coward, cowardly, the cowardly <laughs> bad guy that runs away. That's me. <laughs> yeah, but I get my just desserts. I think I, I haven't run run a, a tally of this, but. I think I've been killed more than I've killed people. <laughs> I think I've, I've, I've had a many, many deaths, some of them spectacular, uh, in, uh, over the years in, in movies. I, sh I probably should have a tally of it at some point. Well, thank anyway, you. thank you. Thank, thanks. Speaking of your childhood um, things you liked, I saw something online about at one point there was a campaign started for you to, you to be a very important doctor? The doctor. Yes. Yeah, the doctor. There was a, a lot of fans got, got together and they petitioned for me to be the new doctor. Uh, this was actually a, a while ago, and this was this generation of doctor that actually Peter Capaldi ended up being. Um, so um, I, I was very touched. I, I mean, the idea that people would kind of go, oh, you'd be great in that part. Well, I, I thought it was great. And also, I, I clearly remember seeing the first ever episode of Doctor Who at my grandmother's and being absolutely terrified. <laughs> and that, like hiding under the chair, literally, and poking my head out. And um, I, I loved it. I loved it when I was a kid. I, life goes on and, and I, I sort of lost uh, interest in it for a while and then came back to it with Christopher Eccleston when he started redoing it and it's, it's just it's such a great story and, and a great idea um, so so yeah the, the, the doctor would be uh, anyway it's it's part of my life uh, yeah hi hello <laughs> big supernatural fan but I'm gonna ask you about punk rock music oh wow so I'm a huge punk fan I have yeah. been like my whole life cramps tattoo the whole nine yards right. so growing up in the UK yeah 
What was the punk scene like there when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. And also, who are your favorites? Okay, well, this is a great subject. I love this. <laughs> so, um, 1976, 1977, which was when it all really erupted, especially in the UK. I was a student, a drama student at university, which actually made me a little bit old to be a punk. I have a younger brother, four years younger than me, who was truly a punk. And the, part of the whole movement was, it was very specific. It was like, if you were a student, you were privileged and you were an old fart, basically. Um, and, and so I lived a lot through my younger brother, but I was so into the music. I, I, I absolutely loved it. And I loved the ethic, the DIY ethic, that you can pick up a, 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 a guitar or whatever, and with the energy and the passion, you can express yourself. I love that. Now, at the time, Britain was in a lot of upheaval, and there was a lot of violence at punk shows. Uh, the, the Sex Pistols toured, they didn't tour under their name, they toured as the Spots, the Sex Pistols on tour. Yeah. I never got to see them, but I got to see pretty well every other band. Um, I lived in Oxford, and uh, there's a, a lot of um, shows were banned from Oxford, because it was a student, uh, town, right? Um, so they, they were worried about violence. But there was a, a club in a town called Aylesbury, which is about 30 miles away from where I lived, that had everybody. And so I saw The Clash, The Ramones, um, who, who else did I see? Susie and the Banshees. Um, they, I, it just goes on and on. I was, I was there and part of, it, of that whole uh, wave. Reckless Eric, I don't know if you're familiar with Reckless Eric. Um, the, the, the bunch of stiffs that came after that, two-tone, yeah. and that whole kind of reggae ska thing. Yeah. Um, I saw Bob Marley, um, and I saw The Who with Keith Moon. I, I, now, they're not punks, but they're sort of influential in that whole punk movement. So, as you can tell by the way I'm gushing now, <laughs> and a lot of my influence is music. Um, I'm not a musician, but I think and I think the same as all of us. We identify with the music groups that we grew up with, and we always go, "Oh, that music's not the same these days." And every one of us says the same thing, right? But I think it's because we identify so strongly with the stuff when we were, particularly teenagers, or when we were discovering our identities and uh, our our rock and roll uh, heroes and heroines were sort of wearing the clothes and striking the attitude that we identified with or represented us. So, um, so yeah, so I, anyway, that, that's a big part of who I was. And you know, a funny thing is that even with characters, I realized, so over the years, I, I, I'll get out and do this. I play a lot of, uh, like, especially when I was younger, I, I used to, now I play sort of older spooky guys. <laughs> but when I was younger, I was more kind of like, the, don't mess with that guy because he's going to attack you or uh, like a, a little bit more aggressive, right? So I realized whenever I was doing uh, one of those characters, I would, I would walk in a particular way and my walk was something like this. <laughs> and, and after a while, after I did about three or four of these roles in different movies, I'd go, why am I always walking the same way? I've got no idea, why am I doing this? And then I realized I was basically walking like Mick Jagger. Like, I, I, I was like the Harry Potter kid, you know, with the school uniform, the shorts, and the socks, and the, yes sir, yes sir, what would you like, sir? And everybody dressed and stood like this, so it was like a revolution when Mick Jagger wore sneakers and jeans and kind of walked with his hips like this. It's like, oh my God, like it was completely revolutionary. So. That's fused into my brain. Whenever I want to be a rebel, I, I kind of want like Mick Jagger, you know, and I still do, even though like Mick Jagger is 80 years old now, but uh, it's just what, what sort of gets burned into your consciousness. And I guess if, like, if I'd have been an American, um, you know, my age or a little bit older than me, like James Dean would have been the guy that I would be kind of like, because he would have been the epitome of cool at the time. And, and I think, 
And this is where, for me, Comic Cons are so cool because it's a celebration of pop culture and it's a celebration, it's the geek in all of us and it's the influences that, that and the, the, the role models that, that we seek, you know, or we identify with a particular idea or look or attitude. And so, so yeah, anyway, it's a great question. I'm glad, I'm glad to sort of talk about my heroes like this. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. We've got, got somebody. Wave, waving, uh, oh, oh, two people over there. Now, while she's making her way back there, if I may, sir, you know the Rolling Stones have a new album coming out. Yeah, I know, uh, Hackney Diamonds, yes, and absolutely. their single is really cool. Three songs have already been released. Yeah, I, I really like Angry, is it Don't angry, Get Angry, angry With angry. Me? Yes, yeah, really good, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, now, I, I'm talking about rock and roll here, just, just wait a minute. We can Sorry. wait for rock and roll. Yeah. Sorry. But, but you know what's interesting for that those guys, they've, got, they, they've had this huge arc where for a while they just became boring and uninteresting. Yes. To me, not, right. not no, to all their fans. Absolutely, fans, absolutely. But also. then they've sort of found their way and they've gone through ups and downs, they've had deaths in the band, yep. but now there's yep. a sense that they're refiguring themselves out and they're kind of interesting suddenly. Correct. And Maybe that's because I'm getting old too, but anyway. And they're working on a world tour as well, just I, let you know. I can't believe it. Anyway, at least Mick Jagger gives me hope because when I'm like, I'll, I see you guys when I'm like 86 here. You know, and I'll let them, anyway. All right, next question. Um, I, I was just w wondering, like whenever you're like on a stage or in front of a camera, like what's going through your head? What are you thinking? Oh, loads of things, really. Um, it depends. It depends, on, like, if there's a lot of pressure. Like, sometimes, like, I get nervous. A lot of people go, oh, I, I couldn't be an actor because I get too nervous. I think actors get nervous, too. I, I get nervous in front of people. I get nervous that I'm going to forget my lines. That's honestly one of the big things. I go, oh, God, i got to remember the speech. Or if I got to speak in an accent, I, as you can hear, I've got an accent, and a lot of the shows that I do, I have to get rid of this accent, so I'm, I'm trying to get rid of my accent, and not do anything too British, you know. That was a very bad version of a not British accent. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, th there's those things going through my head, um, and there's also, um, and I guess that's going back to earlier, why I like direction. Oh, and I honestly do like direction, because if somebody gives me a direction, I'm no longer thinking about all the voices in my head. I'm thinking about, oh, you're supposed to go over to there on that second line. And so I'll, I'll go over there, and I, I won't think about all the voices in my head. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, that helps me, actually. So there's a, there's a ton of different things, and I, I, I don't approach any show, like I don't go, oh yes, well this is my, this is my system, I, I warm up, I do my breath exercises, and then I, it, it really depends on what, what, what's required. Okay? I was just wondering how you felt about your character Lord M in Man of Steel. Well, I, I feel a bit uh, guilty about that, because I've got probably about two dozen friends that would kill to have that role because they're Superman fans. And I didn't grow up with Superman. I didn't grow up with the Superman comics. And then, so they, the whole culture of Superman didn't mean such a lot to me. I mean, I understand it and I get it, but it's not in my bones. Oh, hello, Tracy. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Tracy is my rep. She's, she's very important. Very, Give it up for Tracy. I, th I think we should have a round of applause. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, so, um, I, I didn't know much about him. Right, so I was kind of going, what, you know, what about Superman? Is he important? And anyway, I got very quickly, I sort of did a, a, a speed update uh, uh, about Superman. I really enjoyed the show. I, 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 and I had the coolest costume ever in it. I don't know if you guys, anyone that's seen it, have this huge crown that was actually brutal to wear, but it's like you put the thing on and you go, oh, I am the emperor in a different way, in a different system. And so, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, there are some roles where you don't need a costume or, or props or anything to get you in the mood. For Lorem, that 
just that crown was enough, you know, like the fact that I had this, I suddenly felt like I was transformed. Like some of you guys, I'm sure, with your cosplay, like you put a certain thing on and you go, wow, I feel different, I feel kind of like my character or, or whatever, so, so that's it. Thank you. If you need any comic book advice or you have questions, I could probably talk about that like you talk about music. Music, so, yeah. So, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. there for you. Our, our inner geek, right, we've all got our oh, yeah. own sort of... My inner geek is out. You do have a question up in the front row. Thank you. And I have not, I didn't bring my phone to watch the time. Am I, plenty of time? Um, we've got time for three more questions after this. Okay. Hello. Hey, how's it going? This is my friend. He got me a present today. I'm very, very <laughs> grateful. Hello. Anyway, sorry to embarrass you. Um, you were talking about accents earlier. Have you noticed any kind of, like, Missouri accent? Oh! <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it. I, I've been listening out for it, and actually, I don't. I, I, I'm familiar, like, my ear isn't attuned to the American accent very much. I've, I've got more used to the, the music. So, Canada has a lot more British in it, so I hear Scottish and Irish uh, in different places. I come down to the, to the US, uh, certain areas in Georgia, um, Texas, obviously, um, different regions, I, I can hear the music, I, I can hear it, but I, I couldn't reproduce it. Here, I, it feels more like an attitude, like people have a very relaxed attitude, and it's more friendly, um, but I don't hear something that distinguishes it from other, like it's more of a, a, a manner. Does that make sense? Uh, what, what, would you describe your accent as like, have people told you that you speak in a particular way? For if they're uh, from the so only thing I've noticed is whenever I went to California, they said that I emphasized R, R, like harder R. We well, see. I'm used to that because where I am yeah. in Canada, there's a lot of Scottish and a lot of English influences, and the R's are, are pronounced. So I d it, that doesn't strike me as being unusual. <laughs> um, I think maybe. You guys don't speak quickly. Like you go to like you go to some uh, regions and people speak like really fast, and you have to kind of go say that again. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like what? And I, so I would say, if anything, you guys probably are slower uh, in your sentence construction and, and more considered. You're not gabblers. I mean, some people are, right? This is huge generalization. Like. Linguistics 101 from uh, Dr. Julian Richings here. Uh, but I, yeah, that would be the only thing I've noticed is that I actually understand what people say. So maybe, maybe uh, yeah, I don't have to keep repeating myself. Or they, uh, and me go, what? What? That's a great question. Great I like question. hearing what you hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have time for two more questions. Two more questions. If you have a question, raise your hand, no, please. I'm um, you had mentioned like your um, the punk being influences, but also Hammer Horror. Is that why you do like a lot of horror, like Urban Legend or Q and The Witch and like I, the I, small rules? I, I, it's, it's a great question. I don't think it's I don't have done it deliberately. I think the reason I do a lot of horror is because the way I look, right? Because <laughs> I look horrible. Uh, but no, I've got the bones and stuff. But I, what I do realize, and, and I have up until quite recently that I watched myself in a couple of movies. You know, like I was saying earlier about the Mick Jagger thing, like I went, oh wow, I'm channeling Mick Jagger without even knowing it. I realized that some of the stuff that I do is very um, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, all those British actors that used to appear in Hammer films in the 60s. I'm not impersonating them, but I'm from that era and they've influenced me, and I clearly, you can see the lineage, you know, yeah. you can go, oh, well, he sort of comes from the same background. So I think that's more the reason, is that I've, I've subconsciously picked up some of that, and I have that British formality, even though I'm all over the place here, I, I can do that sort of serious, still British thing that, that happens. Okay, well, I think we got one more. Is that right? One more question. She's had her, she's had her hand up. 
forever. It had better be good, no pressure. <laughs> That's the only way I can, I, I can describe it, it's, but it's an aspect of myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I, I, I find a part of me that is true to this character. So even if it's like a really evil person that's doing stuff that I politically or morally or, or religiously wouldn't agree with, right? I have to find a reason to do it. So I have to find that bit of me that would get really angry and do something rash or whatever, and I've got to sort of, I have to understand that, so I have to find that bit within me. So, I, and you know, like like the, the character of death, I, I have to find like my love, a bit of cheekiness, a bit of love of food, a bit of like um, superiority and, and snobbiness, and like I have to find those bits that are all me, because you won't believe them if I don't believe them. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you'll just go, well he's, he's, he's good, but he's putting on an act. So you, uh, that's my job to invest and find those little bits of me in those characters. Okay? Now, believe it or not, we actually have time for one more. Oh, great. Okay. I'm very happy chatting. Right, right, right up front. I'm just winding up. Now. You went that, like, oh, over the there. I saw her hand earlier. Okay, let's do her. What if we can do two? Uh, All right, let's be All right, I'll, I'll give you answers. Hi. <laughs> Hello. And I was wondering if you had a most memorable line, what would it be? A most memorable line? Did you say? Yes. Like, I'm old, Dean, very old. <laughs> That's, that really is my favorite. I always quote it. I love it. Okay, next one, well, then we can. Sorry. Um, you mentioned earlier about uh, genres you haven't done. Uh, like if you said anime you hadn't done. But yeah. is there, besides that, is there a genre that you would like to do that you haven't done yet? I don't think so. I'm pretty lucky. I, I've covered most things. Um, I don't know what else there. Oh, I, I mean, the idea of singing and dancing in a musical terrifies me. But I kind of find it fun. If, if I could do a, like a dance number or something, and maybe channel my punk energy, <laughs> maybe, maybe that would be it. But like that idea of like singing. Maybe it would be very cool, but it's because I can't, and, and that would be a challenge. But, yeah, but I'm very lucky. I, I, as a character actor, I've done so many different things that I don't feel, ah, oh, if only I could do a funny role, or if only I could do uh, a tragedy. Or I, I pretty well touched on all of them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, I'm going to steal something I've seen my buddy Joey over there do. And after we give our big round of applause and thank Julian for this amazing interview. I love hearing you talk. <laughs> um, if everybody wants to come up towards the stage, we're gonna take one big group photo with everybody. Well, cool. And, and so, again, we'll explain this. You guys will get on the ground <laughs> looking up at the stage. They're gonna come in front of you and look and be in front of you guys. You're gonna be behind them. Right up there at the end of the stage. But, please everybody. Oh my goodness me, this is good. But let's yeah, first, let's give them a round of applause, folks, if we could. Hey, thank you. Thanks, it's lovely, lovely being here. And I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, warm welcome. And while we're getting everyone over there, I've got one thing for you, sir. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. This is the new Rolling Stone song. One. That's right. Guys, if you get around the stage here, we're going to get a good photo. So if you can Hey, it's right there. I don't get to see that occasion. Go see some more. Strut. There you go. Strut. 